Good afternoon folks and welcome back to another Baggins International video. And you join Baggins here and we're having a look at the Albany Primo done by Benny's. Now in a previous video I mentioned that I accidentally binned off my custom Primo but it turned out that it was in a garage and that I just needed to call my mechanic to have it delivered to me. And so I, after I discovered that, decided that I would go to town on modifying it so we could have a look at the various different options and features of the vehicle in full Benny's modified trim. Now, I've driven it around quite a lot and uh, it's quite enjoyable to drive and has the hydraulics etc etc which we'll go into some, into in some detail. I've gone for a sort of pearlescent green over bright pink paint finish which I think suits the vehicle although you're perfectly entitled to disagree with that. I wasn't sure at first but it's grown on me a little bit as has the sort of fade uh, flowery stickerette situation that I've stuck on it. Oh no hang on a second we did decide that that was hand finished uh, airbrushing. So that's if anyone asks, and if I decide to sell the car, I'll definitely advertise it as hand brushed, hand brushed work and not uh, stickers. But uh, I do suspect it might be stickers. And from what I've seen of Benny's shoddy electrical work, anything could be possible. Anyway, so we'll have a quick first person look around the car. As you can see, that pearlescent paint is really standing out. Uh, I would use the word popping, but I'm not inclined to do so. Uh, it is standing out there very nicely, and you can just see the faint undertones of that wonderfully done airbrushed work. You can also see the engraving that's all over this car, perhaps uh, a key feature of the Primo modification. So it's on the door handles, the wheel rims, the exhaust. I think it's on the engine blocks, I think it's on the front of the car, near the sort of bonnet catch area. Uh, it's just an awful lot of engraving work. Some would say entirely unnecessary, but it makes the vehicle quite unique. Well, as unique as a uh, mass-produced vehicle on GTA can be, but it's pretty, it's pretty nice. And uh, on this particular car, I've gone for a really huge ICE installation, or in-car entertainment installation, and there's at least 10 speakers in it, uh, possibly more. Uh, including some sort of subwoofers. So there you go, you can see the engraving on the blocks there. And again, that sort of faint airbrush work that they've done there, and there's some engraving on the radiator head as well. So all in all, a very, very tidy vehicle. I've gone for a light smoke in terms of the uh, window tinting. I think you can go too dark on these and you lose the finish on the interior. Inside, it's all very elaborate. I've got a bobble head and, uh, as you can see, a million speakers. Uh, probably probably just over ten. And uh, and we've got some custom dials and lots of iFruit goodies. So there was an iFruit screen in the door there. There's a dock for the iFruit phone. And uh, various other iFruit pads. Let's call them iFruit pads. Yes. Uh, I've gone for the standard Primo wheels on this one. Uh, well, I say standard, the ones that uh, appear when you spend $400,000 at Benny's, uh, because I couldn't really find any others that I particularly liked more than these, and really the only thing you're limited to is, is some sort of tyre options, but all in all, it's all good. Anyway, we'll jump in the car and we'll give it a bit of a bounce using the hydraulics. It's uh, quite flexible, this car. You can bounce around to your heart's content and Jiggle your bobble head like a good one. Uh, why not? Uh, I've gone for a twin aerial installation on the back, and the I must say the sun is bringing out that pearlescent paint in a in a very attractive fashion. So I'm going to do a little bit of a spin around on the spot so you can see all of the details. I, I'm not sure it's a true donut because uh, I'm utilising the donut feature within GTA, and uh, and as such, just cheating by holding the brake and accelerating. But at least it's reliable, and you can get a pretty damn near perfect circle. Uh, I've gone for the Hawaiian style number plates around and uh, obviously the traditional uh, teabagging uh, number plate uh, which is uh, mandatory on these sort of vehicles. So we, as you can see an absolutely excellent circle there and we'll take the car for a bit of a spin by which I mean just around the corner spin around and come back again. And uh, so I have also installed a very elaborate horn but it seems to have had no effect on that woman strolling past in front of the car so um, God knows whether that whether that'll work in a in an emergency situation but let's let's hope that it, it will just from a safety standpoint uh, I don't want to don't want to be driving around in something that's inherently unsafe so we've taken the car onto the road now I uh, turn up for the books stop looking at it in that garage forecourt and see how things pan out I've got a bit obsessed with pressing that horn so um, you you will get we will get sick of that I got sick of it quite quickly after pressing it another four or five times 
And to be fair, I'll probably press it again. So maybe I'm not that sick of it. It is quite cool. I like I like the uh, the Benny's horns that you can that you can now install. You've got to be careful saying that. Um, Benny gave me the horn. Uh, probably not the right probably not the right way to phrase it. Anyway, so I've I've pulled up here in traditional low rider fashion to the curbside, playing my horn loudly and bouncing around. Nobody's paying much attention, which is a great shame. So uh, maybe just the wrong crowd. Uh, perhaps that's perhaps the situation there, or perhaps not really dark enough yet. Anyway, you can also see the hot pink neons that we've got there. Now, here's a special feature that I discovered on the Primo, which I think you'll enjoy. If you get it ready with the doors fully open, and then slam it to the ground, and rock right, then left, then right, or the other way around, depending on how you look at it, all the doors come off. Uh, not, not just damage-wise, they're just genuinely hit the ground and drop off their hinges, which is quite nice. Again, I'm not quite sure that Benny's Benny's installing these things properly. It's difficult to say. A few times, press the button to open the doors, not all of the doors have opened, some of the boot, you know, the boot's closed on its own, the bonnet's dropped down. Uh, I think, you know, he's charging a lot of money and uh, and things like that, you know, reinforced door catches should, should really come a standard. Anyway, you can drive the car around, no problem with no doors on it, it's quite fun. Uh, I'm not sure it helps with speed of entry to the vehicle or anything like that, um, but uh, but quite quite good fun. Anyway, we've lost some speakers, but uh, still still probably got more than ten, um, even though we've lost a few. So I hope you've enjoyed this little brief uh, look at the Primo Custom that we've done. Ooh, that's a bit close. I'm sure we'll be back with more videos soon featuring the Lowrider update, and uh, check out our rest of our channel on YouTube. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.